Hello. All right, so I am obviously setting things up. I'm not quite ready. Those of you who know me well are shocked, I'm sure. But normally, it takes a little bit for the video to get good. It doesn't stop me most of the time. But I also don't mind plugging a few things in and such. My wife will be here reading comments. So she is here. I'm going to go to the computer and pull it up. Probably. Got it. Ready to go. Okay. And don't forget that we are looking for Psycho Axe Man should he show up. So earlier today, when last we saw our mold making hero, um, I made, I molded the gorilla mask that I stole. I record reel in the ceiling for electricity around the shop. And every time I pull it down, I kind of feel like I'm Igor, you know, raising Frankenstein up into the lightning ceiling. It makes that nice current noise. But I digress. Yeah, so this is the mold for a gorilla. It looks like a mold. Still Beast, long-time fan of the channel. First video I watched was when you used the post phone to fill a mask. Really? That's a fairly recent video. I'm way old. <laughs> I think I think my oldest video now is like 10 years. Not possible. How's that possible? My wife says that's not possible. It can't be possible. She's calling me a lar. So I'm cleaning up from today's mold making for tonight's mold making. But I do. And plus, I have more than just one going on on this table. Kenny and Connie, say hello to your monster camp. Hello. Hello to the Lockhart Monster Shop. The Lockhart Monster Shop. I and like so that, Kenny. That's right. You just logged in to watch me clean. I tricked you. That's not true. I swear fun things will happen. But in order for fun to happen, we have to clean up. That's how life works. Michael Lassner said, Silicone Wolfman videos. Ten years old. Oh my god. Yeah. And then I have seen almost all of them. A couple I watch multiple times to take notes. Hello, master of the masters of the multiverse. Everybody is saying hello. We have the hops family in tonight. What's that? So they have the hops family. They it's do. Me and the pups. Yeah, there's three puppies here in the shop too. I give them a piece of sacrificial couch foam in the corner that they are tearing the heck out of. 
I will get that on camera later to appease you who want to see puppies. Watching you clean still beats reality TV. You are not lying. I know this is your full time job, but do you ever get in a slump and kind of get burnt out of it all? No. Good question. Not at all. Here's the wonderful thing about haunting. All right. Um, what you guys see me doing is mask making. If I get in a slump mask making, then there's plenty of other things that I can do that aren't mask making. I can work on and study actor training, you know, and then become a better actor trainer for a couple months if I'm burnt out on mask making. Um, I could learn um, patterning, you know, and do more stuff with EDA foam. I, there's so many things, there's so many disciplines. I could do leather work, because leather work is good for haunting. There are so many disciplines that apply to haunting that make you a more valuable haunter that I cannot imagine. Um, I can't imagine not being able to find one that could catch my interest for a good while. Hello from Scotland. Hello, All your Scotland. shirt is missing is the Star Trek logo. I get that. That's why this became a shop shirt. Because I heard Star Trek quite a bit. Underneath, I'm wearing a very classic Dark Hour shirt. Here's Mike. Mold that gorilla yet? Thanks for the shop time last night. Sorry it went so late. Gorilla is molded, my friends. No worries. I held him up to the camera earlier. I'll probably end up doing it again. That's why I'm cleaning up this table. I made a mess molding him. Uh, I got the gorilla molded in uh, just under three hours, both halves, this morning. So that was nice. And now I'm bringing over the, the hunchback hand to mold. Whoa, um, that bottle looks not going. No, I'm that is not for puppies. No, they're not. Okay. Here, I will give you a cup. How about that? Can I have a cup? Yes, they can have a cup. Puppies get into everything. This is the glove I sculpted. This is the other hand that I molded. I sculpted and molded. No, I think I, you guys saw me sculpt this one. Well, you saw me sculpt them both. You saw me... You definitely saw me sculpt... Like, I finished this one, and everyone was like, You didn't start at the beginning! That's terrible! So, then I did this one, and I did start at the beginning. So you could see that whole process. And it is a fake arm that is going to go with the hunchback. Yeah, something like that. I wanted to see how you molded the closed hand. Um, how I molded it. Well, literally the same way I'm going to mold this one tonight, except it's easier because the mold wall went right here. And here's the seam on the knuckles. You know, it's the, the same way. See that seam line? See where that seam line goes? I noticed that the one you had on there was a bit different. Yeah, because there's that, a right and a left hand. Is that the glove you made hard to rip? Is that glove you made hard to rip? Yeah, this is, this is very durable, thick latex. I mean, it, yes, it's very hard to rip. Okay. Hi, Alan. Nice to catch you again. Hope you and yours have been well. Live pull on push me. Woohoo! Hey, good to hear from you. Has been a while since I've seen you on. 
will it rip at the seam? No. No, it, um, seams are not like sewing seams on on something you've sewn together where it's a little weaker there. A seam in a latex mask is just where the two halves of the mold come together. And often it's thicker right there, in all honesty. Okay. I see that I need to. I, there's some scritches in these, these little like lines in the fingernails, and this one doesn't have it, so I'm gonna put some scratch lines into that fingernail. Thumb has it. Great. Okay, that was it. I have to make a clay wall that goes kind of in between the fingers and all that mess. So we're doing that now. That clay right here. to make the wall when you are putting on whatever you use to cast it. Absolutely. You can use plastic shims. You can use um, metal shims. You want something thin that's going to do a good job of dividing. I know one guy, he uses um, like toothpicks, like big toothpicks. He does his whole thing in the back and then he puts tape on it. And that's his mold wall. Now that's fine. As long as you're splitting those two sides. Oh, 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 gosh. Uh, I once made a large latex belly and it busted at the seam line. I don't know how you made it. Why does the USS Enterprise use mold release? So it doesn't cling on. Who said that? Tell you. Who said that? I'll tell you. Whose pun was that? Ross Reichardt. What? Ross. How are them adorable puppies? My kids are begging me for a dog every time I show them your posts. They <laughs> are Ezekiel. little hellions. Okay, so you know what? This is actually very cool. So this is Bipolar Bushman. Life takes over, and I miss the live streams. You're welcome to check out the sculpture I uploaded. I'm going to sit back and watch you work. Cheers from New Zealand. So, see those little white spots? That's mold. Uh, it's, a, it's a moist, wet environment in, inside the bag of clay, and mold sometimes forms. That's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to... Hit this a little bit of vinegar, it's on the outside. My vinegar is over here somewhere. Is that because this is the mold that clay is temporary and you're not going to have it in there for long? Yeah. Jordan says, My gut was molded in one piece. How do you have seams if your gut, if, if you had a one piece mold, where was your seam line? Wow, yeah, it's vinegar, all right. But that'll kill any mold on the outside of this clay. It's only on the outside. There we go. Pop that in the oven, 375. Something that feels like a ham. Trying to find my wire clay cutter. Found it over there. I'm going to cut a couple sheets of clay that are about three quarters of an inch thick. 
Okay, Jordan says the seam was between the belly button. It was meant to burst eventually, but it happened too soon. Uh, Zavon Dumalin says, do you ever make a Michael Myers mask? It seems like you are the guy who would do so. Well, I normally only make masks that are original. Every now and then I'll make something that um, is for or from a movie or whatever, but there are so many folks out there who make Michael Myers masks. And I will tell you that I am now a moderator on a group, a Facebook group, called Latex Mask Central. And so a big part of what I do is I approve people who want to join the group. It's very annoying to have this in between me and the camera. I approve people who want to join the group. So, the question, there's, a, there's an entry question because we get a lot of spammers who want to join just to post commercials and stuff. And the question that they ask to vet people is, you know, what actor's likeness was the original Michael Myers mask based off of? If you know Squat Diddley about latex masks, you will know who that is. Honey, do you know what actor's likeness Michael Myers' mask was based off of? William Shatner. That's right, William Shatner. Do I have cool points? You do, you have cool points. Yay! The, the amount of people who say Don Knotts is astounding. What? Really? And I don't let them in because they're wrong. Um, but now I really want to see a Don Knotts face yeah, yeah, cool. painted up like Michael Myers. I think that could be terrifying. Let's see here. So if you get a Michael Myers from me, it's going to be a what if Michael Myers. Both hands sculpted, right? One, and you saw the latex one, yes. Ever banned that dude that was selling the leather thong? <laughs> what? I did not see anyone selling a leather thong, but if they're... If someone posts advertisements that have nothing to do with Latex Mask Central, I do delete them. I don't ban them, I just remove them and, oh uh, well, yeah, I do remove them and I, and I ban them. Everybody's saying I got cool points. Hooray! You do have cool points. Yay. I want to mold the back of the hand first. It has the least amount of detail. The fingers do curve slightly forward. So I want to mold the back of the hand first. I wish this board were smaller. I've got a lot of beef between me and the... Jordan says, my belly was actually for a stage production of Halloween. Cobwebs and Candlesticks is here. I just started a Facebook page for CNC. I didn't think to ask an entry question. I'll probably get spammers now. Damn it. Well, you can always set that up at any time. You should make a Don Knotts mask. That would be awesome. Okay, so I am holding the wall of clay right behind the, uh, the piece. And I'm using my marking tool to mark out where it needs to be cut. My fancy marking tool is just a little pointed wire on the hand. You have to look, if you're attaching the mold wall to a curved section of the, of the hand, then you're going to have to have a curve in the clay as it touches the, uh, the sculpture. You want enough contact to help the wall stay in place, but not so much contact that hurts the sculpture. My wire is not quite stiff enough for this task, so it's bending a little bit. Here come the Viagra jokes. The 
something I marked this channel as not being for kids. All right. Now this should fit underneath this thumb pretty well. The junction of where the clay wall touches the sculpture should be as close to 90 degrees as you can get it. Dealing a little bit with the uh, curvature of the thumb. I can't seem to start sculpting when I have the time, so I always feel like I have nothing to do. Okay, I'm going to need some more of that sentence to help you. What would, read it again for me, honey. I can't seem to start sculpting when I have the time, so I always feel like I have nothing to do. Well, the answer to that is just start sculpting. Get on it. You got nobody to blame but yourself. Get to it. Is it possible to make a clay wall with wet clay if your sculpt is wet also? That is what I'm doing right now. I am making a wet clay wall on a wet clay sculpture. You absolutely can. Did you hear about any flash floods? I have not heard about it. Well, we've had some rain here in Texas. And uh, yes, yes, I have heard a little bit about some flash flooding. Luckily, not near me. I said, oh man, we can't see what you are doing. Is it the... How about now? I run a fine line of you guys being able to see my face while I'm talking and see what I'm doing. I know it's difficult. Now this is where I lined this up at. So it should fit right into there. And this is going to help me establish a good base for my wall. My wall gets tricky up here around these fingers. Now this piece is far too small to be a big wall down there, but it'll work in between some fingers. So wait. When you apply the clay wall to your sculpture, don't you mess up the part and put the clay on? Yes, that is called your seam line. And I can fix it once this half is molded and I pull the clay away. I hate molding gloves, so I'm hoping to get some tips I don't know. Molding gloves just sucks. That's it, that's, that's the tip. If you can, buy gloves. Buy your gloves. You don't have to do this to yourself. You deserve better. I'm only doing this because you guys want to see it. As often as possible, I make gloves in my style, like the kind of Stilpy sells. Or I uh, buy other people's gloves and put them with my costumes. Nothing wrong with that.
twisted. And how big is that creature? That's a massive hand. Uh, it's big. It's a hunchback. So he's man height, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's a big hand. It's chunky, and it's gonna go with his chunky body. If you want my body, and you think I'm chunky, come on, baby, let me know. It's Rod Stewart. Pretty sure that's how that song goes. And I'm actually cutting the clay a little smaller than I need it. And then when I put it in between the two fingers, I'm squeezing the clay wall. I'm giving it a squeeze, and that makes it flatten out. When it flattens out, it broadens. When it broadens, it will um, fit in between there. Do you have a price set on the puppet yet? I do. I think it's 450 bucks. Yeah, it's, it's not done, but I could give you guys a little sample of how it's gonna work probably here in a bit. Well, sorry, but I have to go. It was nice watching you just start your casting. I'm starting my molding. Casting is when you pour it up in the mold. Molding is when you make Are we going to have another flippy cam? Last video was a bit dizzy. I like it. I think I dropped the camera at one point. I want to make a latex or silicone fingers for an actor in my haunt. A crazy farmland with a necklace of nine fingers chasing people around looking for the tenth finger to complete it. Do you have a video on how to make fingers? Okay. Um, yes and no. Wait. Yes. Yes, I do. You can uh, watch my silicone sheet mold video. I happen to be making a bunch of necklaces. One of them is a witch finger. All right? So in that witch finger video, I just I sculpt a little finger out, and then I use a sheet pan from the dollar stove in order to mold it. So yes, there is a video on it. What clay are you using? Water-based clay. It's wet clay, basically. Are you going to make the feet as well? No. I think he's just going to wear sweet boots like the actor wears. The hunchback is brilliant. Uh, That's thank you. Thanks. I always somehow get confused with those two words. You know what? So many people do, and I when I oh, when I correct people. <laughs> I, I'm not correcting someone to be a butthole. I'm only correcting them so that in the future we all know what we're talking about. It is so easy to say the wrong thing or whatever. And then, you know, if you say you're having trouble in your casting process, that's a different set of answers than if you're having trouble in your molding process. Because the processes are different. And I want my scene to make sense on this guy. So I'm actually going to um, run the mold wall around the cuticle, or, or the end of the fingernail, actually. I heard Wed Clay was named after Walt Disney. Yes, it is Wed Walter Elias Disney, Walter E. Disney. Walt Disney's middle name is Elias, which is why he went by E. E-I-E. That is what Brazilian people say when you scare them in a haunted house. E-I-E, adios mio. I know this because I lived in Orlando. My wife is doing something weird. <laughs> NASA just said that the Earth is a perfect tilt to stand up for People all over the internet are doing this right 
our new broom. Let's take a look. Step away from it and I'll put it on camera. <laughs> so my wife wants me to show yeah, you awesome. that she stood a broom up on end. Right you see that? You see that broom over there? My wife stood a broom up on end here in the shop because the earth is at a perfect angle for you to do that. How cool is that? So get a broom. That's that like that's a broom. Okay. So hey, I'm easily amused. Get a broom and try that. While she was supposed to be reading comments. I'm reading comments. You she went are over a there. Monster gangster. And she was All right, a broom. Yeah, always confuses me when I keep saying cast, which means molding on the show. Just tuned in by the way. Do you YouTubers know what wet clay means? You all realize it. Okay. I love how Alan makes everything as simple as he can. He's an awesome teacher. I, I want things to be as simple as they can be. That's the only way I'm willing to do them. Ezekiel said, Old Walt had such a massive influence on the creative world. He sure did. <laughs> Michael Lasseter said she was just parking her ride. She was just parking her eye, All exactly. Right. All right. I'm not going to say anything against that. Will the puppet have a sound box? Uh, well, the puppet will have a human in it, so that will be the sound box. Now, I'll be honest with you. There is a company called VFX Creates, and they have finally made a device called the Minion, which I've been waiting for them to come back out with this. They had it out for a while, and the Minion is a sound, actor sound box that has, you can put a microphone on, and there's recorded buttons that you can hit. Very exciting, really nice piece of technology, um, and I want to incorporate them into some of my costume things. So maybe that'll happen this year. I'm cutting my mold wall at an angle and I'm cutting it at an angle so that um, the area that affects the clay sculpture is minimal. I don't want a you know one inch thick piece that I have to marry up to the sculpture. I want it to be you know as as little contact as possible and yet hold on firmly. Bless you, wife. Her room, room. <laughs> Are you gonna do a foam filled quasi moto monster museum? That's a good question. Um so Maybe, but I don't know if this is the sculpt for it because I actually really want to do a whole line of just human heads on the wall and say, this is the head of a centaur. This is the head of a werewolf, but he changed. You know, this is, you know, so I thought that would be kind of funny. Um, but I don't know if this sculpt is monstrous enough. You can tell that Cyene is in the shop. Idea for a scary attraction. Make a large maze. Give the players a lantern and a squeeze flashlight as a weapon. Have them find their way out of the maze while avoiding the monster. That is Jordan. Jordan? I don't know if you know this, but that's kind of exactly how haunted houses work. Um, especially like a lights out haunted house. You find your way through and you avoid the monsters. I like your idea. Human form monster road gallery. Haha, -ha, nice. Yeah, like you could have a, you know, the body of a, the head of a Japanese woman. There's all kinds of creatures from Japan that Yokai, they call 
them that uh, have a normal woman's head. I love the hound sound effects coming from the shop floor. Yeah. We are inundated with hyenas. Oh, pups. All right, so I'm pretty close on this mold wall. And why are you staring at my head? What's going on with you? All right. Did they move the camera? I don't know. I guess they did Okay. I'm close. But you can also see, you see some light through that wall. I got to fix that. So I'm going to get the whole thing on before I bother fixing it. Starting with clean clay, I'm keeping my surfaces as mark free as possible. I'm trying to get this clay wall down to about half an inch, maybe even three eighths. You can see that I am just marking it down where it goes and I'm cutting it out. How long, uh, excuse me, how long can you store the clay? How long will it last? Years. Uh, the, the clay will last years and years and years. It's dirt. Dirt is pretty stable. Uh, it's mud, you know, it, it normally it's... Uh, collected from the sides of riverbanks and such. So, hey Cheney, Cheney, I'm shooting a video here. Can you keep it down? Thank you. Said that. Unknown origins FX. You're very right. Um, just like in sculpting, people want to rush to the details before they have their forms all figured out. And that's very detrimental to do that. be as stable as possible. I'm going to build up a lot more of that before I actually start molding. Have you, and will you, make a scary version of Slimer? No, I don't like to make stuff already made from movies, even though Slimer is one of my favorite monsters. Uh, someone has already made Slimer, so if I make Slimer, I teach the world nothing. Produce more than you consume. Meaning, if I watch a movie one day, that's two hours of me consuming someone else's ideas. If I create and sculpt for two hours, then that is 
you know, then I'm producing. So just produce more than you consume. Um, and if you are actually making something that is someone else's idea, you're not really producing. You are chewing on something you've consumed or you are about to consume. You haven't consumed the Ghostbusters mythos, you're still chewing on it. And if you can let that go and make something original that maybe Ghostbusters inspired you to make, even better. Cobwebs and Candlestick says, I don't do masks, I do props, and I don't have customers, so I build until I'm happy. That's, awesome. That's perfectly fine. Unknown uh, Origins FX. What? Agree. Especially when you're waiting, have waiting customers, but a good result is better than a quick turnaround. I agree, it's called original. Uh, Michael Laster says, hurry with the mold wall. I can't wait to see you mix plaster. I've never seen you do it. Really? <coughs> George mixed. says, what about what you did with the Grinch? What a, I made a grouch. I didn't make the Grinch. I made a Grouch, which is a caveman version of the Grinch. So it's inspired by, but it's very different. Were they dragging the broom around the floor? That's impressive for those tiny puppies. Uh, they're not tiny. <laughs> they're wee little 25 pound puppies. What happened? That's so weird. Did I? I think I cut off the world piece. <laughs> well, that's fine. Ezekiel loves your philosophy? I has philosophy. George says make something inspired by Slimer. <coughs> George, why don't you? Well, let's just pretend that Slimer inspired me to make this hunchback. <laughs> His head is not un-Slimer-esque, I'll be honest with you. His mouth and teeth are very Slimery. I'll show you the hunchback sculpt. And now that you actually mention it, he does have a very slimer mouth. Not even kidding. It says, uh, make your own class five full floating paper. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I would go my whole life without seeing a class five. Get tired of seeing a million slipknot Myers vortex mask, Voorhees mask, masks. That's Ezekiel. Yeah, I get tired too. Says, I want to inspire my wife to fix me some dinner. <laughs> well, good luck with that one. It's, uh, you're out of my department now. <laughs> Mick is who has got a he's doing his own show. Yeah. Yeah. That was a running leap to get the dog door, by the way, and a failure.
And uh, you come around here. What are you guys doing over there? You're in the wrong spot. We have the Puppy 500 happening right now. But the back of this is going to look terrible because I don't care how the back of it looks. I am bracing this wall so that this wall will stay up while I'm painting plaster onto it. I think that's why I don't make masks. Everyone makes them. I just prefer to watch how they make his. I just build other stuff. Who's that? It's cobwebs and canvas. You know what? So my channel is not just mask making. Now I make a lot of masks. Sorry, my puppies think they're better cameramen than me. Back to work, shall we? Oh, Could have wiped out quite a bit with that antic. My dogs got caught up in the cords for the camera and all that. Not everyone is unique, though, so just do it if you're interested in it. Everyone is unique if they let themselves be. A lot of people are caught up in, oh, I can make money if I make copy, a copy of this person's work. And if you want to sell reproductions, it's kind of what's happening. And you will make more money selling reproductions. But um, it's all, unless you have a license, it's not honest money. You are, you are kind of stealing from another artist, which is why it's illegal. So these little fingers I've got running up to hold up this mold wall. And then once I know it's really braced well, then I can go in and make sure it's real tight to the sculpture and do all that final fixing of the uh, mold wall. Your doggies make great extra entertainment. Kind of using clay like stitches back here. You know, I put a piece of clay bridging two other pieces of clay and I pinch them together and that is holding them up. That's exactly. That's why we're named Unknown Origin. Hence, Origins Unknown, Original and Never Done Before. Nothing wrong with being yourself and showing it in your art. Yeah, that doesn't suck. <laughs> Few things suck when they are free, and few things suck when they are original. This is sacrificial couch foam so that the doggos have something to destroy and they think that they're causing problems because that's what they live for. What? There are three puppies, by the way. Count them three. <sighs> yeah, wait till they come in the house with wet latex in their fur. Uh, you think that hasn't happened yet? Because it has. <laughs> These boots that make your channel go viral, the everyday challenge between art and pets. <laughs> Well, the word challenge and pets definitely belong in the same sentence. You want to do some hard mode, do it with three puppies in the room.
Christmas patching in the wall now because there's little holes by the fingers. I mean, in most mold walls, I would never have to do this on because I can get it right tight to the sculpture, but hands are so tough. And I, I like to sculpt my gloves a certain way. I like to sculpt my gloves with a little bit of dynamic motion in them so that they help hold on to your hand. If you just sculpt a glove like this, it's very easy for that glove to fall off if it's oversized. If you sculpt it with its hand closed a little bit, it's going to want to hang on a little bit too. You're going to need a ceiling mount tripod. Yes, I may need a ceiling mount tripod to handle the doublings. Very rare that I have to do this much doctoring of a mold wall. Normally I'm like one and done, boom, 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 done. Not now. Gloves. Gloves. Now I can also, I can help out my mold wall a little bit and just go a little thicker than normal, paint it into the detail on the fingers, but make it thick enough where it will just seep into the cracks in the mold wall. So I'll probably go a little thicker than normal for a first coat. Are you going to mold vertically or lay it down? If I were going to lay it down, I would have laid it down already. Right now, I'm going to mold this half vertically, and then I'll lay it on the back half that's finished. traditionally very difficult to make. Okay. Has what? I know. have some wooden q-tips and I'm going to drive them through the mold wall into the sculpture just to make sure everything is pinned nicely in place. Ezekiel said Vic will need Uber Eats to speed dial <laughs> Uber Eats. Is. Question Alan. Have you ever just started over a project more than halfway through? Sure. Hi, Edie. Edie Never be afraid to fix a mistake just because it took you a long time to make it. Now, that being said, I find almost everything is salvageable. I'm not a giver-upper on things. Uh, not in any sense or imagining of the word. What's your favorite monster? All right, so okay. you know who that is. there is a you movie know. that was out maybe 10 years ago now called the Spider Spiderwick Chronicles. And it's a kid's movie. Um, and all the monsters in it are actually CG. 
However, the way that they do goblins, it is a toad. The goblins are like toad inspired, so they're very frog and toad like in their um, in their movement and how they they look. And there's there's one shot in particular where these kids are trying to get away from the toad goblins, and kids run down this leaf littered path in the forest and the goblins go after them and it's full body you see them running it's it's beautiful you cannot you could not do that with practical effects um it was it, it's a beautiful shot and in all honesty um really those are a cool looking monster very inspired design by going with a toad influence on the goblins from the Spiderwick Chronicles. You know that was called Yeah. The goblins were led by a red cat. Who looked okay, but the goblins are where it's at, man. So now when I see cool monsters of note, I remember so that I can tell Michael Skullberg if they're my favorite monster <laughs> because he asks me on a regular basis, which is fine. Some people it's sheet ghosts. Some people it is my favorite monster. Everybody kind of has their thing. He's big on are awesome. Killer clowns from outer space. So much better than that. Killer clowns from outer space. MR clowns. Alright, so, so now my wall is pinned in in a lot of places. It's pinned in the sculpture. Alan, you put holes in your sculpture. Yeah, I put a hole the size of this shaft in it that I can plug with clay after I pull this mold wall off. I'm fine with that. Now I'm going to smooth down that clay wall a little bit. Uh, pledge will uh, soften this clay just like water would. And I've got to put it on the sculpture anyway. I see a spot where I want one more of these little pins in. And that is up here under the thumb. Okay. I'm putting Pledge on the sculpture in order for it to release better from the plaster. Worked great just on the Gorilla Head I did earlier today. Pledge is my go-to release agent for plaster to clay. Do you need one? No, you don't need one. But I like to use one because it makes cleaning faster. I'm now piling my clay up because I'm going to move on to the next stage. I'm going to be plastering this in just a few short moments. Legends Meg Mufflebones is the best monster ever. So, I have a mildly amusing story about Meg Mufflebones. Um, I used to go to a convention every year in New Jersey called the Chiller Theater Horror Convention. It used to be in Hackensack, New Jersey, or Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I think it still happens. I just don't get to get to it anymore. And Robert Picardo, or Picardino, was there who played Mega Mucklebones. But they were having kind of a Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, my forgiveness, a Star Trek get-together. And he played the doctor on Scar Star Trek Voyager, who was a, a hologram. So, getting plaster off the handle of my brush. I cleaned the brush, but not the handle. And I ran into him in an elevator. He was also in 
my favorite looking werewolf movie, The Howling. He played Eddie Quist, who was the main bad guy werewolf in The Howling. So I happened to see him in an elevator and I said, um, Mr. Picardo, uh, I, uh, I just wanted to say I, I really admire your work and I loved you in Legend and The Howling. And The Howling is one of my favorite um, monster movies and horror movies of all time. And he looked at me and he goes, thank you. All I have heard about for three days is Star Trek. And then the door opened, and he went out of, out into the hallway to uh, go to his room. So I brought him a little bit of horror in uh, into the middle of his Star Trek convention. Legend is a great movie. Alan, is that one of Miss Shannon's new brushes, or is that one that you cryptid a year ago? This is my okay. brush. That's from a Could be mine. chip brush box that I got. You're by yourself. With my own mind on lawns. What was, your, <laughs> what was your most difficult sculpt to mold? Well, um, I'll tell you Tuesday, uh, because I think the moray eel sculpt we knocked out on Friday turned out great, but I'm not entirely sure. So, uh, and this moray eel is four foot from table to top, and... Um, it's it's pretty darn big around. It, it's a big project. Let's see. Uh, will the hops be attending Monster Palooza here? No, Monster Palooza happens at a real bad time for me. Um, it, it's in a couple weekends, you know. Uh, I, I can't do that. I got to get ready for Trans World, so I cannot. I'm afraid go to Monster Palooza. And then they do Son of Monster Palooza, Alan. You could go to that. Well, that's in frickin' September. I'm a haunter. I do haunted house stuff. I can't do that in September. There's a lot of shows that get asked you to come in October, and they, I guess they don't realize what you do. Maybe if I retire from Dark Hour one day, I'll be able to make some of those shows, because I love going to shows. Like, trade shows are like Christmas for me. I, I, I love haunted attraction, sci-fi, horror shows. They're just the best. But I also I have to make the monies to uh, buy puppy food. Yeah, to buy puppy food. Puppies gotta eat, as the great Kimbo Slice would say. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, Vic Springs, he is funny as hell. Wife update. So she fixed me dinner, brought yes. it to me, read the messages. She said she loves you all and she's for hire. <laughs> Awesome. The howling is freaking awesome. Hey Shannon, Crystal wants to know what you're wearing to the werewolf ball. She can't decide on what to do. Oh Lord. Um, I, I couldn't. I, I predict a room of 80 little red riding hoods <laughs> and 20 little red riding hood werewolf huntresses. Are you doing a new werewolf? Yes. I'm making a new werewolf costume for myself in my massive spare time. Massive spare time. But there's not going to be a werewolf ball where I'm not going to dress up a little. You know what I'm oh, saying? Uh, Edie was asking, the pink hairbrush, not the chip brush. The no, that's also, this is one that I got at the dollar store <laughs> for my own it. purposes. <laughs> um, yes. This is not my wife's. There was a time where I jacked her hairbrush. You did. It's, it's very true, because I was doing a lot of werewolves, and they needed solid brushing. My ploy worked. The puppies have worked themselves into a frenzy, and now they're trying to nap. Later, I'm going to run around like crazy and make noise just to keep them awake. Now I'm ready to mold, right? No. I still have something to do. I have to make um, where there are going to be keys for this mold wall. So I have a wire loop tool, and I'm just going to make some good dents in this. I'm twisting, and I'm making like semi-circle divots. I'm going to do several of them. And these are going to help that mold lock together. 
And I want to make sure that I do all of them very straight on. I can't do them from an angle, because if I do them from an angle, then they're not going to release easy and clean, and they're going to catch. I don't want them to catch. I also can't do them right on top of where I put a Q-tip. The howling is freaking awesome. You know what? The howling has one of my favorite werewolf movies in the series, which is The Howling, the original. And it has one of the worst movies I've ever watched. I believe it's either The Howling 4 or The Howling 5. Um, and it takes place in a country western bar, mostly. Uh, there's a lot of line dancing. And it's kind of a whodunit, who is the werewolf type of deal. And the werewolf is in it at the end for 30 seconds in a mask that you can buy at the store. Um, it is one of the worst horror movies I've ever seen in my lifetime. Jim Brown posted on Hunter's Hangout, the one-inch chip brush, the hero of the haunt industry. You ain't lying, and I destroy so many of them, I almost feel bad. Why not a silver bullet costume? Um, because I try not to dress like a priest. If I can help it. Just a personal preference. Dead in yard haunt. I'm just finishing up my Wolfman sculpture. That's awesome. I would love to see pictures, Dead End. Dead End. Dead End. Michael Lasseter for hairbrush, a crock pot, a kitchen utensils. All right, y'all, helping me here on the path of marital bliss. Thanks Bunch of guys. jerk snitches. How often do you go live on Haunter's Hangout? Uh, I don't go that live on Haunter's Hangout that much anymore. There are so many other folks who go live on Haunter's Hangout. Um, and any video that I do on Facebook, it's hard to catalog and it's hard for people to find. If I'm going to teach something, I want to do it on YouTube. And I know I'm not really teaching anything. I'm just kind of showing you guys how I do it. Teaching is a little more involved. But um, I, I do think that it should be catalogable so that you guys can look it up later. And it's very hard to do that with videos on Facebook. You should get a show this one. What's that? I will, I will show. My wife says there's something that you guys should see happening over here. Or not. Now, I'm pretty much ready to El Moldo. All this claims go back in a bag before I um, mold. Next, we mix in plaster. I'll show you guys something cool here, though. Now, they sleep. Sleep of the not so innocent. Yeah, the sleep of the unrighteous. <laughs> okay. Does the Q-tip act as a release for the two parts of the mold? No. No, the Q-tips are just holding the mold wall to the sculpture. They're pins. I'm pinning it in place with the Q-tip. I did get busted for chopping up my girl's yoga mat, but I needed it. And how often did she do yoga anyway? Really? <laughs> like, was she like an everyday yoga person? Or did she like try yoga once, had the video, and there it sat? Say hi to Austin Denny. Austin! 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 Get the scare from you, guy. Yeah. Hope you're doing okay. We miss you, buddy. I'm actually gathering stuff right now to build a vampire hunting kit. Cool. And then I'm going to do a werewolf one because of Howling 4. Watch out. Howling 4. Now, Howling 2 was in the castle. Is that right? And then Howling 3 was the marsupials in Australia. Um, not everything that happens in Australia is cool like Ezekiel. So... Uh,
I'm going to take a look. I'm taking a look at this mold wall and the mold. I'm making a plan. I figure out what's happening, what's going on. And there's something I forgot to do. That's why you always take a look. Look at it with fresh eyes right before you go to the next step. Do not Vaseline the wood that it is sitting on. And that means the plaster could stick to this wood and cause problems. For Shannon, but I do the same thing. I would steal Carl's kitchen stuff out of his barn truck or his special stash. He thinks I don't know about it. They're all talking about the howling and the howling, two, three, four, Good. Sid Banning, uh, Gary Busey. I think it's Howling 6. Oh my. That is The Freaks, where it's uh, howling in a circus. And uh, there's a vampire who runs the circus, and he kidnaps the werewolf boy. Howling 3 is the marsupials. I think it's Howling. It's 4 or 5. One of them takes place in a castle. I think that's Howling 2. Says hi. Hello, James Minnick. All right, I now Vaseline this. I'm going to get myself a clean chip brush. Got to walk past Doggy Jones Town to get to it. I really wish I could hear you better. Everything is at full volume and issues. Um, am I quiet for everybody else? Is, uh, is it quiet? A little bit, I'm moving around, but if it's close, that shouldn't be a problem. The mic should pick up okay. Let me know if everyone has had sound issues or just me. Now is the part that Michael Laster has been waiting for. Ooh, oh my God. Getting some water in this bucket. What's that now? Okay. Probably can't hear Shannon well because she's pretty far away from me. Now everybody wants to go watch Howling movies. As they should. Howling movies are great. Netflix has a couple. I am molding a glove sculpture. It's the sculpture for a glove, for a hand. I sculpted a hand, I've made the mold wall. How is your haunted house? Well, I like it. It's open this yeah, we're open this weekend for Love is Blind, our Valentine's Day show. Love never dies. Uh, yeah, uh, Love Never Dies. Love is Blind is the old name, different show. Love Never Dies. Zombie themed. It's a lot of fun. It's a very intense show. You know, it's you, Edie. Edie Munster is on the list tonight. Yeah, yeah. It's great.
I'm not making a lot of plaster right now. Just putting on that first coat to seal the wall. And then I'll do several fabric layers. I have about an inch of water in the bottom of this. Maybe three quarters of an inch. Not a lot. This is the bottom of a five gallon bucket. I always cut them off so that they're easier to mix and move around and stuff. Uh, getting your arm down into a whole bucket, a five gallon bucket, is a pain in the butt. It's a pain in the bucket. Uh, UltraCal likes to go on in layers. I will oblige it. For the Gorilla Mask, I did just two batches. I did big batches, and I added plaster when I needed it thicker, and I, you know, I just kind of worked that way. But uh, this time, I think doing a few layers is wise. It'll strengthen the mold wall on there. Alexa, countdown, two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. I remember when all those toolboxes were new and bright and shiny. Now they look like a real workspace. Yeah, they, they get beat up in here. So I set a timer for two minutes. And why is because um, I don't want lumps in this. So I'm giving it time for the moisture to travel through that powder and get everything wet and soaked. And you can see there was, it was all white up on top, and now it's mostly gray. And it's slowly being saturated. I might even give it like four or five minutes. It's cool outside. I use cold water, so I'm going to have plenty of working time. I'm not worried about it. I am going to move it over to my table. But I'm not mixing it yet. Put all of it in there that you need. Don't mix it. Wait. Let them get to know each other. Let the water and the plaster become friends. Play a little berry white, whatever. That's gonna save me from having a bunch of lumps. Once again, I'm now I'm waiting on the plaster, but I am taking a look. I have a little bit of ambiguity right here. See how that's a little dented? That's not going to be a clean push-off point for me. Can't wait for Halloween to come around. Um, I, I can wait. i got to get through Transworld first. Is I gotta, this Ultra Cal or Hydra Cal? This is Ultra Cal. In the winter, I normally use Ultra Cal because... Hydrocal prefers warmer water, or else you can get spider cracks. I do not want spider cracks in my molds. Alexa, my timer went off. I'm not freaking out. It's not a big deal. We're okay. We have plenty of time. This isn't really starting to harden until I start mixing it. The chemical reaction, the countdown, hasn't really started yet. And I have a nice clean edge to my mold wall. That's what I wanted. All right, if you look now in my bucket, there is no more white. It's all that nice gray color, meaning it's all saturated. Isn't that the best? Yeah, it's pretty. And now, when I squeeze it up, I don't have a lot of lumps. There's no lumps because everything is saturated. There's lumps are those knots of dryness. I'm not going to get it because I did not um, rush it. They've all been properly introduced. It's like a party. 
you know? You gotta let the ice break a little. Would you trust Rob to do this? Rob is good at mixing plaster and pouring up masks. Yes. This is a skill set that he has picked up. I do not get buckets of plaster from him and say, Rob, this is mixed like crap. So that is a skill that he is actually pretty good at. He can mix plaster and he can pour up masks. And since those two things we have to do a lot of around here, I'm glad to have his help on it. Okay, here we go. Now this is thicker. See how thick that is? It's not really dripping off. It's like the uh, blizzard of plaster mixes. That's because I'm putting it on this mold wall edge and I don't want it to really seep through. I don't want water thin plaster to get there and uh, seep through and cause problems. I want it to get to that crack and stay at that crack. Because crack is whack. <laughs> Hit the sack. Don't you know, I'm glad to be back. I just went from Whitney Houston to ACDC without batting an eye. Wasn't it Whitney Houston who said crack is whack? Yeah. Like, based off of her music, like, she's not the one I would end up dead in a bathtub. Nice love songs and ballads. Rob is getting pretty handy with the paints also. Uh, yeah. Mike Smallbrook says, so you're saying I'm almost as good as Rob. Well, <laughs> Rob can also pour paint into a cup without pouring it all everywhere. Oh. Which Skullberg had a, has a minor issue with. He's not going to pour any things. I work in a haunted house. It's called Ghoul Brothers. I'm a character there named Stabby the Clown. That is great. I like this Dunkin' Donuts painted demon head. What? I like his Dunkin' Donuts painted demon head. Oh. Rob, yes, Rob painted a demon that looked like Dunkin' Donuts. It made everyone hungry. It was terrible. Or wonderful, depending upon your desire to evoke emotion. My, my, Alan, what big hands you have. Indeed. on that mold wall. The line between the mold wall and the hand itself. This is plenty thin enough to catch detail, but it's not so thick, it's not so thin, it's going to run through every little hole and crack in that wall. And that's what I want. When I get to where these deep cuticles are, I'm really bouncing it in there to make sure I don't get any air bubbles in there. You're not dribbling it on by hand. You're actually touching the brush to the mold. I'm not. It might look like I am, but I am. I have it. I load the brush, and the end of the brush is in there. It's not right at the end. And the plaster is touching, and then I'm wiggling the brush. And that makes it flow, and I just block everything from your vision. So let's, let's watch again. Get a little closer. Let me show you. Just. All right. Loaded brush. The plaster is touching, and I'm wiggling. And now that's flowing. So it's flowing down the finger because I'm reminding that that it's liquid. 
And I might pat, but I'm not touching the sculpture. It's still plaster. My wife left. You can't ask any comments. You actually can. Hydrocal, ultracal, and cutical. Indeed. That is true. Ross, you have the puns tonight. And having the puns tonight is better than having the runs tonight. Now that I have the mold wall joint covered, I'm just going to hit the wall real quick. And I am a little more aggressive on the wall as far as brushing because there's no detail on the wall that I'm trying to maintain or preserve. I've let this sculpture sit for a couple days, so it's more than leather hard now. And it actually would be pretty hard to mar up the features of it with uh, with the brush but again I'm just slapping the plaster brush onto it only the plaster is touching the sculpture mm -hmm. I'm reminding this plaster it's a liquid with a little bit of a shake or the movement of the slap and then it is transferred to the sculpture and this little bit that I have it's going to get me there. This should get me to the stage where I can apply fabric. On the, these hand molds, I am using burlap. I almost never use burlap, but I will on these. But I want to keep them light. This could very easily be a very heavy mold if I'm not careful. There's something going off my right shoulder where I can't have my arm up very long for a while. So you'll see me switch and go left-handed. That's not like a super duper technique. It's just my shoulder hurts for some reason. They have a flavor. So yeah, now I'm really just loading up the brush and giving it a shimmy up there. Big dog just tuned in with some what you make. Uh, this is, I'm molding a hand that I sculpted. This is going to be a, a glove for a hunchback costume. And right after this, honey, remind me, and I'll show them the hunchback costume, what I have so far. After, you after this layer, yeah. Would you apply plaster bandages and make it lighter? Uh, yes. I'd also make it one heck of a lot weaker because plaster bandages are impregnated with plaster of Paris. And that stuff is garbage. I could, I could take four or five plaster bandages, pick them up and rip them like paper. Um, I, I don't, don't do it. Sword fighting have anything to do with your shoulder hurting? No, my, my shoulder actually hurt before sword fighting. I am um, 42 years old. So I am pretty firmly uh, Gen X. And it is, to my knowledge, it's not really our nature to disclose all of our miladies. A little bit, you keep it in, you know. The world doesn't need to know. I don't want to announce my weaknesses. Crazy talk. So, you just don't mention it. If you hurt, you don't bring it up. How are you? Fine. Things are good. <laughs> How old did you say you were? What, 42? 43. I'm 43. <laughs> I'm also bad at math. <laughs> Let me announce that.
It's beginning to look a lot like molded. All the plasters here. Have you ever used list gel? Yes. Now, ballistic gel or ballistic? You mean ballistic gelatin? Yes, I have, and yes, I've made it. But now I have a friend who works at a company that makes it. It is Black Lagoon Supply, and uh, they make a ballistics gelatin that is good for ballistics gelatin, which is uh, recreation of you know the effects that a weapon might have on a human body, and uh, it's also good for gelatin prosthetics. So. I have a little sample of that over here, and I'll probably do a video on it shortly. He said yes, Johnson. Amanda Jensen says, good evening, Alan. How are things? Wonderful. Mark Wonderful. Lester says you're getting so old you've forgotten your age. Go walk your t -rex. Yeah, good time to go walk the T-Rex. And I wanted to make sure I did like a smaller batch of plaster this go-round because I don't want to put a lot of weight and stress on that mold wall. Um, mold walls are always a little precarious. And hand mold walls especially so. So this layer, I'm going to let it harden before I do the fabric layer. And then that's just going to be support for any layer that comes after it. Because this is weight, you know, there's weight on top of this now. You know, this bucket of plaster has a good weight to it. So I'm putting that on the sculpture. I'm putting that on the mold wall. And it has to support that. And I'm trying to put it on in such a way where it's going to stay and not flow. This started as probably a buttermilk consistency. And now it's to a, uh, a thicker pancake batter consistency. And it's working its way up to a, a lovely sludge. What's great about UltraCal as, composed to, as opposed to HydraCal, UltraCal thickens slowly over time. It gets a little bit thicker, it gets a little bit thicker. Um, whereas HydraCal tends to gel and then it's solid. And you don't have a lot of working time with it. Whereas the Ultra Cal, it really slowly takes form and gets thicker and thicker and thicker until you can't use it. And it seems like there's just a bigger window of the in between stages. See how I'm putting my brush on here and then scraping the plaster off? And that's building up the edge of that mold wall, which is what I want. Hey, big dog. Can plaster of Paris from Michaels be used to make a mold like this? If you hate yourself and you want to not work one third of the time, no, no, don't use plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris, I call plaster of peril because it just, it's not consistent. There'll be times where you mix it just like you've mixed it every other time and then it just decides not to set up on you that time. It's like you're rolling the dice every time and it just stays muck and does not get firm or rigid. Um, and then when it does get rigid, it always feels a little wet and clammy. And it's just not good. Don't do it. Just spend a little bit of money and get the right thing. I'm, I love shortcuts. I love going cheap when some people go expensive. Just buy this plaster. It's not that expensive. And if you, and it, this is, I guarantee you, this is cheaper per pound than Plaster of Paris is at Hobby Lobby. You'd have to use one of their coupons in order to get it at a, uh, at a decent price. Because it's just, they sell it in smaller quantities. And those, you know, eight pound bags that they sell it in, 
you know, you're going to pay, you know, 10, 15 bucks for that. And this is a 30, no, this is a 50 pound bag of ultra, ultra cal. And it's like 20, 25 bucks. So, you know, you're, you're not saving any money. You're just, you're just not finding a good supplier. If you have to drive a couple hours to get good, good stone and good clay, do it. Worth it. Buy enough for what you need. Ghostbusters is my favorite movie. Ghostbusters uh, does not suck. It's a good movie. Uh, it is very much a comedy. I, for a while, I was mad at comedy horror movies because they didn't take monsters seriously, and I have always been very serious about my monsters, even as a child. But then looking back, some of my favorite movies were uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Well, that's a comedy. Um, so, you know, yeah. That's fine. It's a good movie, Ghostbusters. Not that you were seeking my approval on your movie choice. Swalberg said, our A-L-E-X-A -E was just alarming from the office for the last 10 minutes. I actually exited the video so I wouldn't have to listen to the alarm. Question. Now Alexa, set an alarm for 3 a.m. <laughs> You're such a jerk. Alarm set for 3 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Oh my god. Question. Now will you keep applying plaster till the mold is in the shape of a block or will you follow the form's shape? Um, I will follow the form's shape-ish. Uh, I'm going to get it thick enough and then I will stop. But I have no need to make it a whole full block. One of the reasons why I am going to use uh, burlap on this is I want this mold to be a little thinner. I'm going to try and keep it three quarters of an inch to an inch thick and do a couple layers of burlap on the back here. Are you doing one side tonight or both sides? Uh, Alexa, what time is it? <laughs> the time is 9.27 p.m. I'll probably do one side tonight. <clears throat> Where do you buy your ultra cap? Um, I buy mine, we, I have two places I can get it fairly close by, Trinity Ceramic or Biddy Mold Supply. A ceramic supply store is normally has uh, UltraCal or HydraCal, and they, you know, and, and they have your clay for sculpting also. Where do you get your clay when Biddy is sold at? Um, Trinity Ceramic. So I'm not understanding the use of the Q-tips. Okay. Alexa, countdown, one minute. I think Edie came on after One minute, starting now. She was an honor. I had a hand, and I had to make a mold wall that goes up against that hand. Well, I want it to not fall off of there, so I use Q-tips to pin through that mold wall into the um, sculpture. That way, the mold wall won't fall off when I push on it with the brush. And even though it's got a lot of contours and curves, I can stab it in there and keep it. Hopefully that helped. Anything else, love? I hope you forgot to tell her to not set the alarm for 3 a.m. wandering around the ranch at 3 a.m. cursing her. That's Ezekiel. Alexa, stop. Do you guys use encapsulated silicone prosthetics at Dark Owl? Uh, we do on occasion, yes. An encapsulated silicone prosthetic is when you encapsulate uh, silicone, a deadened silicone normally, with a uh, cap plastic. We use a material called Super Baldies. I use my Black Harbor Freight airbrush. We, our molds we use are silicone molds. You spray a layer of, sil of Super Baldies into the silicone mold. You then will, um, hang on one second. 
once you spray in your super baldies, you give that a little bit of time to dry. And we normally do like three layers because th uh, spray, they're, they're kind of thin. Then you put in your deadened silicone and then you spray the back of it with um, super baldies as well. And then you have a silicone material encapsulated in a cat plastic. And what's great about that cat plastic is that dissolves away with 99% alcohol. So what you've made is thin edges that will dissolve away into that makeup. They're very nice, almost as nice as a prose transfer, which is something else that we're really getting into at dark hour. Hope that helped. And I, I could have answered that question with yes. We do. What do you think of Ed Edmonds' work and style? I love Ed Edmonds. Uh, his work is great. His work is amazing. Um, he is truly one of the fathers of the mask industry. Um, distortions, huge effect on many artists and, and development of the artists. What is this going to be? Also, Sorry. I'm mad at Ed Edmonds <laughs> for something that he really popularized. Um, distortions was one of the first mask companies to sculpt eyes into the masks, and then you looked out of the tear ducts of the mask. So... Um, basically, Ed Edmonds is one of the fathers of poor vision for haunted house actors while they're wearing masks. Um, and it makes the sculpture look better. It makes the mask sell better. So I completely see why he did it. But you can't see for nothing out of a mask where you're looking out of tear ducts. I'm supposed to run through a dark maze looking out of these little tear duct slits, I say, nay, nay. So, you know, I always ended up having to cut the eyes out anyway so I could see. So most of my masks, the eyes are the actor's eyes, the way God and Don Post intended. But one of the nicest men I've ever met in my life um, I consider him a friend, excellent guy. He does excellent work. Um, and I am very grateful for everything that he has done for the haunted house industry. He single-handedly pretty much invented animatronics for haunted houses when he came out with the Distortions electric chair. I had a couple years of work because that first few rounds of electric chair after you use it for a season or two, its head would fly off, which was spectacular, but a one-time thing. And I was able, I, I figured a good way to fix them, and I was able to fix them when they broke. So I probably did that at about 20 different haunted houses. I think most major haunts in America right now have a gore galore push puppet of some kind whether it's a giant rat or goat or horse or dragon or whatever it is, or gator, they have a Borgalore puppet of some kind. And I, uh, that's wonderful. The same can be true for at one time, every haunted house had a distortions electric chair, which I, I think they still make them and they still sell those. And I think that came out in 93, 94, maybe, maybe 91. But he invented the haunted house animatronic industry. And I am very thankful to him for that. You had a second question, honey. <clears throat> what is this going to be? This is a mold of a hand for a hunchback. 
It's the hand of the hunchback. It's a beginning so strong. Try encapsulated gelatin takes the body heat factor out of the gelatin. Yeah, I can see that. So, one could use bamboo skewers in place of the Q-tips, or was there a benefit to using the Q-tips? I had the Q-tips. I'm out of bamboo skewers. Alexa, add bamboo skewers to my shopping list. You already have bamboo skewers on your shopping list. I ran Would out you the like other to day. Add bamboo skewers again? No, no, thank you. Okay. Alexa, cancel the 3 a.m. alarm. 3 a.m. alarm canceled. <laughs> what are your thoughts on using wet clay for someone who wants to start sculpting pups? Do it. That's what I used when I started. Look at me now. I barely ever eat it anymore. Favorite movies? Like Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, Ernest Scared Stupid, any Godzilla movie except the 2002, any movie with Vincent Price, Bela Lugosi, or The Man with a Thousand Faces. You throw in The Princess Bride and I pretty much agree with you. Princess Bride is probably my favorite movie ever. And Willow is pretty high up there, too. Oh, that's good. I never wear masks because I have glasses. I can't do contacts either. You can. There's a, now there's a company called Mask R Aid, M A S K R A I D, and they make foam inserts that go around your glasses that will allow you to wear masks and glasses at the same time. Mind blown. That's a really good product that came out a couple years ago. Does anyone have distortions in Jordan? Beth Williams says hello. Hello, Beth Williams. Cobwebs and candlesticks says inconceivable. <laughs> I do not think that means what you think it means. Question for Miss Shannon. What is your favorite monster movie? <clears throat> okay. I'm going to go old school, which is the way I tend to do on just about anything because... We're shocked. I am very nostalgic by nature, but and I forget what year it was, but when I was a little girl, uh, I saw the Bernie Casey Gargoyles. What year was that? That was old. It was old when I saw it, too, because like, it was like an afternoon movie. It was old. Alexa, what year did Gargoyles with Bernie Casey come out? Oh! This might answer your question. Gargoyle was released on July 14, 2000, and it was no. created on July no, 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 14, no, no. 2000. No, she don't know. That was wrong. She don't know. You can't ask her. So anyway, um, that movie that I saw... Uh, with was it Jennifer Salt and oh god I can't forget I can't remember the, the 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 classic actor's name oh shame on me anyway Bernie Casey was the the gargoyle with the wings and the and yeah you can see the zipper up the back of the suits and all that but who cares I loved it I thought even as a kid that he was the sexiest thing I had ever seen which when I met Alan. Um, in 2001, who was dressed very similar to them, did not hurt his chances of getting my attention because he was so beautiful. But that's probably one of my very little, hot, a little more aliens. I love the aliens and I love xenomorphs and uh, it's puppet time. Bye bye. So hanging down here will be a fake arm. All right, will be a fake arm hanging down on this side, and over here it's your arm. So he'll be holding something in that arm. This is the hump. I'm going to decorate this like it's his hump. I'll have a shirt on, of course. And this is the hunchback. <laughs> 1972. What was the name of the, the, name of the glasses again? Or the stuff you look around the eyes. Mask R Aid. So here's a hunchback, and here's how he's going to look. Here's how he's kind of going to be moved and put together. You know, should be fun. Okay. Why? I actually need you to tell a story right now. 
How are the new shot puppies? What new trouble have they gotten into? Why don't you tell folks about shot puppies, baby? Shot puppies. Come over here and tell a story. Okay. Oh, uh, boy. I'll be right back. I will tell the story of how the shot puppies came to be. Oh, okay. I don't know if anybody really knows that. Um, because you you made that happen. Be back in a minute. Shop mm -hmm. puppies. Mm -hmm. We've been since we lost our big girl in March. We've been we wanted to get some dogs because we are very much dog and cat people. While I'm doing this, I'm going to show you the sleeping angels. Right now they're angels. Uh, don't be fooled. But um, January second. I'm driving home and Alan calls me and he says, uh, what are we doing tomorrow? And I said, uh, we're going to work. It's Friday. And he said, well, good, because we're going to have puppies. I got to go. Bye. And hangs up. And that's kind of how he tells me how things are going. And uh, so he had found out from our friends Michael and Tiffany Skullberg that there was an accidental litter of Great Pyrenees pups that needed a home. And he drove from Plano to Cleburne. So for Texas folks who do not know, it's a good two and a half hour drive. And uh, we were going to get two. And we were going to get two because it's always good to have two. But when he got there, mm -hmm. he could not choose. And so he took all three and sent me a, a text message with a picture. It with three little puppies in it. And they were little. Uh, they were only eight weeks old. And I was like, oh my God. So I took off to a pet store because we had nothing to feed them. We had nothing, nothing puppy ready at the house. And now we have three. And uh, it has been a roller coaster because um, housebreaking three very rambunctious puppies at one point. Like the first four or five days, we really did not sleep because we were just constantly cleaning up after them and trying to teach them how to use the pet door. And, and it's just been something. Which is why I did not make Haunt Con. And um, I did not make the uh, Halloween show in New Orleans because we've had fresh puppies and I had to stay back and, and work with them because we've got to get them better trained before Transworld because I cannot miss Transworld. So um, <laughs> he, uh, he had a chance to take home two and instead he took three because in his words he couldn't choose. And we have the room and he just doesn't have the heart. He doesn't want me to tell you this, but he's much more softer hearted than I am and he absolutely just grabbed him. So another something that he does not want me to tell you but I, he's gone to uh, the bathroom so I'm going to tell you that Alan every night we crate train the pups so at night they sleep in a, in a big crate that they can currently still fit in. That's not going to last much longer and every night before he goes to bed he crates them. I've already gone to bed by them because I'm up at five and he does not go to work until 10. So we've got kind of a lag in between. So I go to bed first because I get up earlier. He has a song that he sings to the puppies. It is a lullaby called the Dream Bone Song because there's a little treat called Dream Bones, which are a little puppy treat that um, he sings them a little song and they know when he starts singing the lullaby that it is time <laughs> It's time for, uh, for them to go night-night, and it's about the cutest, sweetest thing you have ever seen. But he would probably prefer I didn't tell you that because it ruins his reputation. But I will try and get some video at some point and post She's it. She's the wife of lies! Because it is the dearest thing. I know, it is the dearest thing you have ever seen. And uh, he sings a little lullaby to them every night, and they get their little treat, and then they go get in their little crate and curl up and go to bed. Um, I sing them a brand name. Pretty, pretty adorable. Anyway, the reason we have three crazy puppies is because he just grabbed them and went. And um, they are a handful, but we absolutely love them. So wish us luck because we're still crate training is going well. And with that, Back to you, Alan. They all want to hear the lullaby the, the now, but I know you're not going to sing. No, freak the dog. Go to bed. Yeah, you can't do that. Change that stuff out. That is good stuff right there. Okay.
This is. <laughs> Does he sing it naked? Uh, well, sometimes he's. I'll do anything naked with the puppies in the house. <laughs> That's a lot of teeth and claws at the wrong levels. He uh, he sings uh, he sings it in his shorts. And so, wow, that's going to be an awesome hunchback. There's I think no it will, too. in that story. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Street. That is true. I'm sorry. You're Finally, right. one without nudity. I appreciate you guys sharing your knowledge. I have to go do my husband's duties. I'm sure <laughs> it's to wash my own clothes. Love, peace, and hair grease. Hooray. Uh, I wonder if you've seen the promise mask on. Actually, this bucket out. in the house. I'm going to beat you with this paper. Naked puppy singing. That's pay-per-view stuff. I think he just let himself out. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, that's really He knows what's up. He is encouraging. He knows where he's supposed to pee and where he isn't. Okay. So, right now, I want this to be good and firm. Right now, it's cool to the touch. It's going to warm up a little bit. And it's going to go a little lighter in color. Ultra Cow tends to say a little bit gray, but it will cure a little lighter in color. I'm going to go collect my burlap that I have already cut. And I'm right warm in here now, so I'm going to take off my squisher. should be plenty of burlap pieces for, I go about postcard size with my cuts of burlap. And the kind of burlap I use is the lawn and garden burlap from Home Depot. It has a real nice big weave to it. So it, it's, it's got big openings. It's not real tight like the fabric. Why am I cutting this cardboard tube into smaller chunks, you might ask? Because puppies love to play with these cardboard tubes. Oh. And I don't care if they destroy them, because I would have thrown it away. like seven or eight pieces. We'll do one layer, two, four, five, six, seven, twelve. Yeah, I have plenty here to do both sides. I would cut more right now while I'm waiting on this plaster. It is starting to warm up, and I would feel pretty confident right now going ahead and mixing my plaster. Where did you get your, um, your glue gun? I got my glue gun from a company called gluesticks.com. G-L-U-S-T-I-X.com. It is a Shore Bonder. This is the Shore Bonder 500 watts. Ah, 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 ah. It's a really good gun. We are amazing puppy fans. Well, well, all the benefits that good.
Can we get some water? While I do, I want you guys to think about what you've done. <laughs> Scott's putting the link in for the... Big Dog's going to order one, and Scott's putting the link for the shorebonder.com, the blue gun. Yeah, Surebonder is who makes it. That's the type. So sneaky. What's that? You're so sneaky. So what I'm doing right now while I'm waiting on the bucket to fill up is I'm putting on hand lotion because of how much plaster will dry out your hands. You mix a lot of plaster in one day, then uh, you can really do a number on your hands. Now put gloves back on. This next layer is going to go very fast. And then I'll probably retire for the evening. Thanks for the story. I'm getting excited to see you guys at Transworld and MC42. Amanda and Jessica. Monster Camp 4. Amanda's coming to Monster Camp. We just had Monster Camp. We're Monster Camp 5. MC5. Bipolar Bushman. I love how you got the puppies. Both my dogs and my cat are all rescues and slightly nuts. We have many cats too. Yeah. We have four cats. Four cats. Three dogs. And soon we're going to have chickens and a peacock. We didn't get no peacock. They are creamers. Nobody screams in my presence unless they paid me first. And Rob. <laughs> and there's Rob. You are correct. I'm shaking, pla I'm sh sifting plaster into here so that I'm not releasing it into the water in big clumps. If I just dump it in there, then the water won't touch all of it. If I sift it in, then the water gets a chance to coat everything on the way in. I feel like that's going to be pretty good. Alexa, countdown. Two minutes. Two minutes. Starting now. So this layer is just going to be a layer of burlap dipped in plaster that goes on top over here. Um, and I'll use whatever's left over, thicker, to uh, build up these mold walls and make them nice and thick. I live closer. Closer, I would like to be a shop monkey. Who's that? Big dog. I would be glad to have you. Uh, Big Dog and his wife came to Monster 4, and they both sculpted orcs. He made a
orc and she made a girl orc. Isn't they, what they ogres? They're orcs. And they're lovely. They're awesome. Uh, so much so that I actually uh, poured up a copy for my monster museum. I asked permission. They said I could. And uh, so I'll make sure that I get finished pictures of their orcs hanging in display in the monster museum. That, that was me. Dog's so like, what was that noise? That was terrible. I was being musical. Uh, now I can clean up my workstation, but I was actually really neat while I was applying that. Like, I have almost nothing spilled. Alexa, stop. Thanks for being such an amazing inspiration. And Big Dog says it was an honor. Thanks. What's what up, Alan? Like what up, Alan? Like your glove? He likes my gloves. They're blue. They're very fashionable. Kind of a periwinkle blue, I think. Right? Good color. Great. I think he means. People that you sing a lullaby to puppies? Oh, <laughs> sorry. You're right. I should do that. All right. So, great. Uh, I do want to paint some on there. I'm going to grab another chip brush. I'm going to paint the layer on just to kind of prime it. So, because wet plaster will stick better to wet plaster. So I just went over there to get a brush. And a puppy went belly up, hoping I would scratch its puppy, its belly. But my hands are covered in plaster, so I could not. And my wife could not handle that. So she has gone over to pet puppy's belly. To the belly. No belly unrubbed here at the Hobbs house. Four cats. That'd be like having four sisters. <laughs> well, in all honesty, uh, we have a dog door, so they're pretty come and go as they please. Tuxedo can normally be found, he's our elder statesman cat. He can normally be found on uh, the couch hanging out with us in the living room. But uh, Doyle, Jones, and Jenkins uh, are often on walkabout. So they're probably in the house maybe only 25, 30% of the time. Does that sound right, honey? Yeah, they don't, they don't go far enough. Yeah. We have... <sighs> Nobody goes far enough. Just about three acres and they hang out and play on. So they're normally right around here enjoying themselves. So we don't have a cat box, so they go outside. Yeah. The no cat box in the house. Because that's gross. That also means they bring us presents. Yes. But many times when they catch something cool outside, and bring it for us. They think we are terrible hunters. My old basset used to lay down at my feet so I could rub her tummy. Nothing is wrong with that. With all the previous Wolfman talk, where do you rate Michael J. Fox's Teen Wolf version? The movie or the makeup? That's what I want to know. But in all honesty, the makeup wasn't that bad. He, uh, he could have a scary look. Uh, I thought the long hair on it was actually kind of cool. 
because most wolf men have that very short hair. And I thought, yeah, okay, it's a good mix of people with long hair and and wool hose. So I like it. I don't mind it. I liked Teen Wolf as a kid. I'm not sure it holds up today. But I did enjoy it. And actually, the Teen Wolf uh, TV show for MTV, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I watched the first season or so. And I, I, I enjoyed it. I had a lot, a little more teen angst than I tend to like, but there was a, a wolf man and a monster of the week, so that's cool. Asking about the makeup. They could go a little further with the makeup, but I think anytime you use a star like that, I'm thinking about Jack Nicholson and Wolf, they always tend to pull back some on the makeup. Uh, I'm sure you can really see that star's face. And I don't know if that's always the right call, you know, but what they did. Wasn't there a drinking game about pups going belly up you wanted to make? <laughs> yes. I, uh, I, I, yes, there was, there was a drinking game. Anytime they go belly up or they fall off the porch, you take a drink. I think we should stick to water. Otherwise, we'll be... My liver would have been destroyed you know, today alone. Alone, the way how many times they fall off the porch. They're not the most graceful creatures on the planet. They're not built for speed. They're built for cuddles. We eat the worms are wasted on cross country. All right, so now I have burlap. Put a piece in. It's the loose weave. If you have the tighter weave burlap, you want to store the burlap in a bucket of water and then squeeze it out because the water is going to help the burlap get into the weave. But this weave is so open that we don't really have to do that. And I'm putting it on and I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a press. I don't want any air bubbles in there. I did just plop it right on top of the fingers first. Even this, I put it in, I give it a little bit of a squeeze. I don't necessarily want it sopping, dripping wet. I don't want it to slide around. I put it on, a little bit of an overlap. Marry it in. Ezekiel says the Aussies didn't even want to play that drinking game. <laughs> I know. I pick up the puppies as often as I can because uh, that's not going to be an option, certainly, their whole life. It may not even be an option for very long because they, you know, they put on, since we've got them in five weeks, they put on 10, 15 pounds. Wish I could lose 15 pounds in five weeks. Awesome. Not by having a dog run away. See, I'm just putting this on. Now, I don't have to do the burlap in. I'm going to do two layers of burlap. They don't have to be two layers and wait for it to dry in between. I can just put it right on top because it, it's a chemical reaction. It's not like I'm waiting for it to dry, you know, so the air has to get to it. So I'm going to do another layer right on top of this. My son is suddenly five, 
five, six at 12 years old. He wants to wrestle. It might not end good for me. That's Ezekiel. Oh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a bit. Skullberg says, keep picking them up so it's awkward for them when I come over and pick them up and they're full grown. Have you ever had a sculpture fall over or fail while you are doing the plaster part? Okay. Let's talk about a falling over plaster story. Heart attack. What's that? It's a heart attack. It's so scary. I'm talking about something else. When I lived in Orlando, oh. I was making a tauntaun. That's the creature that they ride in Empire Strikes Back. I thought they smelled bad on the outside. That creature. I was making one for Star Tours, uh, Star Star Tours weekend at Disney, back before they had a park. This was '97, maybe '98. They did they did Star Tours weekend, and you know they always up the Star Wars stuff. So I'm making this, and it was a silk costume. Because you would be on stilts and look like you were riding it, but there was fake legs, you know, those kind of costumes. One of those. And uh, so I'm making that, I'm sculpting it, and I'm sculpting it in my apartment, and it's in my kitchen. I come home from the haunted house one day, and I had put it on a two by four structure in order to, uh, you know, it was, so it was high enough I could sculpt and sculpt underneath of it. It was going to be seen, you know, by people. So I wanted it about the height people were going to see it to make sure that, like, if you looked under the chin, that was all sculpted and stuff. So I get home from work, and the there's broken two-by-fours on the ground, and I'm convinced that someone came in and stole my sculpture. Because there's broken two by fours on the ground, but the sculpture itself is missing. The sculpture is missing, it's gone. I'm like, oh my God, somebody stole it. And I was already a little bit paranoid because when you make something for Disney, like they want, they want to know where all the files they gave you are, you know, like computer files and pictures for reference. They want all that back. Like you're not supposed to keep that stuff. Um, so I'm like, oh man, someone stole the sculpture, and I, I, that's where my mind went. And it took me a while to figure out, you know, the door is closed, but I can still hear outside pretty good. What had happened was, um, the sculpture, big, like, almost camel head, basically, two by four structure, it broke. It was 350 pounds of clay. So it broke that two by four, and it was just tall enough. When it fell, it broke through my kitchen window. I lived on the second floor. It broke through my kitchen window and destroyed my neighbor's patio table underneath me. But when it went out, it pushed, it broke the glass and pushed out the blinds, and then the blinds came back in. So I couldn't tell that the window was missing because the blinds were still there. And my blinds weren't in the best of shape to begin with, so, you know, um, so yes, I have had a sculpture break, thought it was stolen, it was a giant tauntaun head, the end. I hope that answered your story. <laughs> I've heard this story, so funny out the window, can't remember if you got your deposit back on that apartment. I've never gotten the deposit back. It's almost a point of pride for me now. Nowhere that I have lived have I got my security deposit back. It's just not a thing. All right, so I'm pretty sure that I have two layers over this whole thing. I'll do one more for safety. over the back of that hand. That's where I put the first one. I'm not sure I put any more there. 
am not worried about exposed plaster. I mean, exposed, exposed burlap. Um, like if I see the burlap grain in the mold, it won't bother me. So what I'm going to do now is I want to build up the walls of this mold. I don't want that to ramp to the mold wall. I want to bulge at that mold wall. I'm going to add a little plaster while I've got in that bucket. And that's going to thicken it so I can put it on, almost sculpt with it. I'm just adding plaster to make it thicker. So what did you do? What did you tell Disney? Oh, I did it again. I just sculpted it again. Uh, luckily, the sculpture for a tauntaun is terrible. It, they, they don't look good. They're not a well-detailed piece. Um, it's not an intricate sculpture. I, uh, I got that one. You know, used that clay again and uh, fixed it. Back then, I was not the best sculptor in the world, but I was a stilt walker and I made things, so... I go a little thicker with this. I really want to make sure it stays on those mold walls when I put it up. I'm going to load it onto my hand and scrape off my hand on that mold wall. So I'm loading up the hand here with plaster. And I'm running it straight off so I get a nice build up on this edge. Because I know I'm doing that maneuver, that's why I put those Q-tips in there. It's very easy when you're doing this to just push that mold wall right off. And then you are scrambling because you have ruined it. And I'm marrying it back into the sculpture a little bit. I am making sure I control the amount that I have up here. I know. I don't want to add a lot of weight. But I need it to be thick there. I don't want that to be like razor thin. I gotta pry that apart. I'm not gonna start up here and work my way down so nothing is supporting it. If I start at the bottom and work my way up, then it's going to build onto itself. Ezekiel says, evening all, must go get the kids. Thanks for showing this process. Wonder how it, wondered how it was done for gloves. Thank you. You must be do some Tim Tams unless Shannon has lifted the van. <laughs> Maybe an MHC. Are you going to MHC? I'm on a self-imposed van right now. i got to lose a little bit of weight. You can still see the shape of that glove in there. You know, I can get you guys a little closer. Still see the shape of that glove in there, but uh, obscured by plaster. There is at least, you know, two layers of burlap over every inch of sculpture.
This thumb is kind of a weak area on the mold, on the sculpt, I should say. This is how a thumb joins up. So I don't want it to be weak on the mold. I'm adding a lob there, making sure that's nice and thick. When will you be doing the other half broadcast? I really want to see how the main mold is done. Tomorrow night. I'll do it tomorrow night. If I don't do it tomorrow night, I'll do it uh, in the morning. Let's see how my life goes. Skullberg says, I'm fasting till next Monday. Better lose a few pounds by next week. Are you two racing again? Yeah, me and Mr. Skullberg are in a percentage mass uh, weight loss. We, it, it's a good motivator for us. I think we're both kind of Alphas, alphas, and we may we may be a little bit competitive. So, you're fasting until Monday. That's gonna. Suck. I'm gonna send you pictures of cake every day. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, I have some extra plaster. So I am making a spine right down the middle, which will add strength, just like the spine on a person would. So we got a nice thick rib over here. I've got a thick spine. I'm using all the plaster that I made. This bottom edge I don't think is very thick. Thicken it up. Treating. I'm, I'm making sure that this edge is thick. I'm pushing, I'm shaping. What, honey? Are you going to make some more Halloween masks for your haunted house this year? Yes. I'll probably do some here at the house live because of how my workday lines up now. I'm, I'm running along that mold wall edge and I'm making sure it's thick. The little valley right here on each side of the glove mold, that's okay. I get strength from this spine, and I get strength from the edges. I'm keeping the weight down a little bit. So I'll have two of these halves I'm going to have to manhandle. When I say I, I mean wow. Is this this costume for Transworld or a custom order? This is a piece I'm making to sell at Transworld. No one has ordered it. It's not for me. This is a hunchback that will be added to my line of costumes I sell at Transworld. I'm now well past the uh, brush stage. It's all pretty much 
solidified. Eh, it's mush. It's a it's a firm mush right now. Babysitting this mold, I'm watching it. I'm watching it as it solidifies, as it heats up. This is Zach Fleshman, a Hobbs family. Can't wait to see you at the show. Hello, Zach. Zach, are you sculpting the dead cat for this costume too? Um, I might just do a build up on it. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. Who asked that? Stacy thinks I should have him holding a dead cat. She thinks there'll be public uproar. I'm like, okay, I can make it a baby. And she said, go with cat. Well, you know, he could be holding anything. I need some reason to have this arm be dead. So have an idea, all right? I kind of want to run this by a couple people, including my wife. Since the hunchback, and this is this is pretty much set, so I'm I'm waiting for it to get rock hard and then it'll be done. Since the hunchback, he's got the hump, and that's what the actor is looking out of. I was thinking about putting a nipple, like up on his hump like way up here. He's deformed, you know. And then, because his head's down here, he could say, hey, my eyes are down here when people are talking to him. What do you think? Someone has a one joke moment. Yeah, but it's a guaranteed joke every time. If someone has trouble with a joke in a costume like this, it shouldn't be with a costume. You're right. Thank you. Good point. Well, I'm waiting for plaster to kick. If you would like to head on and forge our path to uh, Everybody loves it. to sleeping. <laughs> I have to get one set of demon teeth for that set. Yeah. Get it. I will uh, be here. How much longer do you have? Fifteen. Fifteen minutes or so. Now I'm waiting. I probably, if I were blazing ahead and doing the other side tonight, I would start peeling away the clay wall right now before this is all the way set up because I can do that and what's up against the sculpture, what's up against that clay is all the way set up. I will start pulling out Q-tips. I will get some pliers and start pulling out a few tips. They're just stuck into the wall, but uh, they're in there. So I went through the whole clay wall and into the sculpture, so there's a little bit of suction also.
should have counted how many I put in. So then I would know how many to take out. And there are going to be little holes in my sculpture. I'm okay with that. The security that I got from these Q-tips is huge. I think that's all of them. I always get two kinds of Q-tips for my shop. I get this kind, which has their, their bamboo Q-tip, so that's a wooden piece. And I use these for little wooden sculpting tools all the time. I clean stuff with them, you know, all kinds of pins and mold walls, that kind of stuff. And I get the plastic tubed ones because they um, make great hypodermic, fake hypodermic needles. So I can um, cut off one end, even make it be sharp, it's a little plastic tube. You put it down into a syringe and the cotton head on it stops it from going all the way through and then that plastic syringe looks like it has a needle again. But it's just plastic. Boy, this wire is causing all kinds of problems. There, you guys thought I was doing a Dutch tilt for effects. I'm not going for an Oscar, I swear it. Speaking of which, horror movie, one movie of the year. That's pretty cool. Parasite. Is that a horror movie? It's a psychological horror. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Somebody thinks it's good. Now we clean up. It was a nipple idea. Tell you what, we'll have a nipple option. <laughs> grab this tea. What's that, love? I'm going to go grab the tea. Okay. Step out of the pot. These babies are tired. All right, so uh, clean the table. I will throw away all the little plaster bits and stuff. Um, let me see if it's firm enough. No, no pasties, no pasties, just, just the nipple. Bipolar Bushman, thank you for hanging out with us. You have an optional tongue for your Krampus. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to go for them. All right, so here we are. This is nice. I'm getting pretty firm. Let's spin around here. And now you can see this whole structure that I did on the back side just to keep this wall from falling down. Now most of this clay is perfectly fine. It hasn't really been involved in the molding process. So I'm going to hang on to it, put it in a bag, and I'll use it on my sculpture. No, 
then I can start pulling away the rest of that clay wall. Any overhang might grab, so I've got to flake that off. So I want to do it while it's kind of green. Green meaning not fully cured, not the color. See, a dead werecat baby would be a little weird. Thank you, Jennifer Holloway. Hopefully I'll see you at TW. Because a werecat baby would require explanation. And if something on a costume or character requires explanation, it, uh, it's too much work for the viewer to do. At that point, you're asking a lot from your audience. Wonderful. My clay was not so thick that it uh, seeped through and caused, my plaster wasn't so thick that it seeped through and caused problems. Very happy about that. This should get me many gloves. And in all honesty, what I'm probably going to do is I will um, make a pair of gloves and then bucket mold them one piece from a you know nice thick master pull them out and uh, do a one piece mold for these guys that is something that I learned from visiting the distortions uh, factory Here I am patching the little holes that the toothpicks put in. Little tiny holes, I'm still patching them. Anybody's going to see these little points of damage. Because I am patching. The little fixed points of damage. And if I did not patch them, they are holes. Okay, they're holes in the sculpture. So what would happen is when I mold it, what would happen is it would make a little peg of plaster that sticks out in the mold. And I guarantee you that that little peg would break off and you wouldn't see that hole anyway. Because everywhere that there is air will become stone. And now I can go back in with something like this short brush. Make sure it's not too wet. And jab all those little pieces that I just did, just put a texture back on them. So that's how most of this skin texture was done. And now I'm going to lay this down, and that's going to be my... Um, I'm going to lay it down, and that's how I'm going to mold the other half. Maybe I'll get to that right now, too. See how this does.
righty tighty. Lefty loosey. Yeah. Okay, it's happening a little differently than I hoped it would, but it's still coming off in there. It'll be very easy for me to lay in here uh, to just paint on the plaster. I'm going to use some of this clay to make it lay level. Again, I want it very stable. Yes, it's an old glove, so I'm not too worried about it. Use these pliers to just break off some of the overhang that I've got. That, those don't have any chance of causing a problem. I'm very happy with how this mold is coming out. If I didn't work tomorrow, I would stay up and just knock out this other half. Um, what you guys saw was all the prep. That's what really took a long time for that first half of the mold. But doing your prep right, I think Michael Laster was talking about it before, getting your prep right is a big deal, man. a little edge it was over the wall the clay wall now I'm knocking it off anywhere that I think might be a little catchy I'm just gonna stuff that with clay because I'm about to put plaster on this uh, not right now but I will tomorrow and I want to get this all prepped so it's ready Little air, couple air bubbles in my keys. It's not a big deal. I'm going to use like a wide pair of channel locks to knock off this edge because they just give you better leverage. Good shape. Um, I'm going to put on, well, I'm not going to put on pry points. Normally I'd put on pry points right now. If I put on pry points, then what I would worry about is that it's, they're just going to dry out. Uh, and pry points are little areas to get a screwdriver in where you can pop the mold apart. Like this will stay clay, 
when I put plaster over this, then I can put a screwdriver in here and pop and get two halves apart. But um, I'm not going to mold this until tomorrow, so I'm not going to put the pry points on because they'll dry out and just fall off anyway. I'm going to pledge this. I'm pledging the sculpture. I'm pledging the mold. That's a coke, by the way. I don't need it. I don't need to see it. I can I can see the fine mm -hmm. mist coming out. That's plenty. And uh, you know when I when I come back and work on it again tomorrow, I will uncover it and I'll pledge it again. So it's gonna have two or three coats of pledge before I mold it. Go ahead and grab the garbage bag. Well, the brown one is Cheney, and Cheney is my houndo. You cannot have my doggo. All right, I can just cover this up. It's pretty rainy weather, so I don't have to be super serious about it. About covering it, that is. At this point, I got half that mold knocked out. I will get, and I started about eight. See, gloves are a son of a gun, man. I molded a whole mask front and back in under three hours this, to this afternoon. That one half of the mold took me from, what, 8.15 to 10.45? Yeah, so the other half will be done in an hour. But that first part was rough. But Oh, I did not use 50 pounds of UltraCal on this. Um, 25, 30 is my guess, is what uh, what I used. So, But you guys are awesome. Uh, thank you very much for watching and hanging out. Have a great night. And, of course, go make stuff.